Hi, I'm Plummy. So yeah, this episode was garbage. And from what I've seen of people's opinions on the internet, from watching reactions on YouTube and reading people's comments on the Flash TV subreddit, it's a pretty objectively agreed opinion that this was a bad episode. For me personally, it, it, it doesn't really bother me too much that it is a bad episode, uh, especially coming after like the last two episodes, which were really, really good. And the reason why it doesn't really bother me because I still enjoyed it, weirdly enough. Because yeah, it was so bad. It was bad in so many ways, from the writing to some of the acting and to some of the... Uh, things they were forced to do because of certain uh, events in real life that happened uh, with one of the actors. It, it's just, it was so funny. I laughed my ass off throughout the whole damn episode. And there are quite a few things that I want to say about this episode. And of course, I wish it was genuinely a good episode. But I still don't really hate it. I think it's the worst episode, but at least... That we've had. it's the worst finale that we've had in a while, but at least it's not the most boring one Because like I genuinely had fun in this episode And I feel like at a certain point during the episode like the final battle when even Cisco and Killer Frost showed up The episode also kind of embraced the stupidity of it uh, Especially with the song that they were playing during that fight scene. So I had a lot of fun watching this episode, but I do think it's like the worst episode we've had in a while because like there wasn't I don't know because clearly originally it was probably maybe maybe it was still like a worse episode compared to the other two just because the villain of the second half of season six wasn't great like Mirror Monarch as she calls herself now wasn't really the greatest villain I don't hate her, but I don't really care for her, to be honest. Uh, so, I don't think this episode would have been the best finale or anything ever, but it would have at least felt like a cohesive and interesting episode, not the mess that we had uh, in reality. But yeah, there's a lot to talk about, so I don't even know where to start. Um, I kind of like the tone of this episode, like... It really nails the tone of like an invasion is coming. Uh, like it has a certain horror vibe to it that I kind of like. Although I wish uh, the hands that come out of the mirrors and grab people uh, in the episode was scarier. Because to me it really, really isn't. It's just too obviously CGI. And um, it's just really not that creepy to me to see those hands. I... I don't know, I I guess it's just because the thing that creeps me the most is seeing corpses and stuff, and obviously because this is about mirrors and all about corpses, they can't, can't really do that for me to get creeped out by it, but just seeing these glassy hands is not really that creepy to me. But that's just a, a, a me problem. <sighs> so yeah, um, where do we start? Um, I feel like the beginning of the episode probably felt the most normal and in terms of like the quality being very similar to the last two episodes, it felt cohesive, it felt very sophisticated and it like, like it was continuing the tone and everything of the last two episodes. Like the beginning of the episode, I was literally feeling like and thinking that, hey, this is really epic, I'm, I can't wait to see where it's going to go. And from that first like 10 minutes of the episode, it just went freaking downhill more and more with each scene. Um, it's still a little weird after the last few episodes that they kind of were building all, all the stuff with the um, artificial speed force only to destroy it. And even in this episode, it still feels like what was the point of that? Um, so, uh, in the beginning of the episode, we had Barry renouncing that they won't be using an artificial speed force because he, he needs the real thing, not an artificial version of it, even though they still kind of get an artificial version of it at the end. I'm, 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 
it's a mess of an episode. I'm not even sure what to take from this episode as like what they were intending to do, what uh, they mean by certain things. It, it's a mess. It's a mess in so many ways. Uh, but he announces that he won't be using uh, an artificial speed force, so he basically has no powers now and he doesn't know what he's going to do, how he's going to save everybody. So, um, Mirror Monarchs calls on to, uh, up to him and talks to him, asking for everybody to go to the Mirrorverse. Why? I don't understand. What would uh, she gain from the, the world being invaded by the Mirror Copies and everybody from the real world going to the Mirror, mirror World? I don't really understand what her goal is there. It, it, it's, it doesn't make any sense, this motivation. But it was an interesting concept, at least, that she uh, wants to force everybody to stay in the mirror world. It was interesting to see that. Um, I believe right after that uh, interaction between Barry and uh, Eva is when um, Harrison Wells shows up. And what a fucking letdown uh, is he in this episode. It's it's so stupid. They so they fucked it up in so many ways, and I don't know if I can blame it on COVID because obviously this episode was altered in many many ways. But like, I don't understand what they're trying to do with him even. Because like in the last episode we had the introduction that oh the original Harrison Wells is alive now, so a lot of people were like, great, we're finally gonna get the original Wells. I can't wait to see him help Barry and become the newest part of the team. And maybe they're still gonna do that going forward in season 7, but who fucking knows at this point? I don't know, with all the things that they explain about him in this episode, it's even if they use him more, it's just stupid. I wanted him to be a normal person like everybody else, to be a normal character, to basically become like what Harry uh, Wells from Earth 2 was in like season 2, uh, and season 4, just helping them be the Harrison Wells of the team. But apparently he's like a fucking god or something now, because he can travel in time, he can teleport, and do all those all other stupid stuff. And even though in a way I appreciate that he has the memories of other Wellses and uh, knows the, the relationships uh, uh, they've had with other characters, that kind of makes the character feel like the ultimate Wells because he has all the merits of, of, of all the different Wellses and all the uh, relationships that he has, uh, they've had with other characters. It's a cool idea to have as the final Wells of the show. Like, we're not gonna ever get a newer Wells because the multiverse, as far as they know, is gone and definitely it's gone in the way it was before where there is no more alternative versions of the characters that we have on Earth Prime, or at least that's how I get it. Like, you won't see an alternative Cisco now, or an alternative Barry. You might have an alternative Flash, as we're going to see in some new episode of uh, Stargirl, I think. There's going to be an episode in, in which uh, John Wesley Shipp, I think that's his name, who plays Barry's dad in The Flash. And Jay Garrick and the Earth 90s Flash, he's going to show up in that show. So, you still have alternative versions of the characters, but it's not, uh, like, it's not doppelgangers. So there's probably no more Wellses in the universe, in the multiverse. So yeah, um, I like the interaction between Barry and him, but again, uh, as I was saying, it's cool to have him have all the knowledge, but I wish, I think it would have been better if he had no idea what the fuck happened, he had no idea what year is it, and he had to build th those relationships with Team Flash from the beginning up. Like, as if he had, he had never met them, because he technically hadn't until this point. But because of the knowledge he has of all the other Wellses, he, he has now. And that's why that interaction uh, between him and Barry, which he says that of all the Wellses, uh, the original Wells is the Wells that Barry wanted to mean the most, kind of rings hollow because yeah, we always know that, we knew that because in season 1 Barry was like a fanboy for Harrison Wells. 
So it's cool to have him actually finally meet him, but it's not really the original Wells now. It's kind of an amalgamation of all the Wells that we've had so far, so it doesn't really work as well as it should, probably. And then everybody uh, comes into the room and sees that uh, Wells is back. They confuse him for Nash, but he obviously explains that he's the original Hives of Wells. And then follows um, a little bit of a dumb scene that it's kind of funny, but I feel like... I don't know. I feel like it, it's... it's How to describe it? It's, it's stupid and it kind of spits in the face of the people watching the show. Because, like, I'm fine with jokey explanations of stuff and trying to poke fun about how ridiculous it is that Harrison Wells is back again. But you don't really have to have the character say, Wells, 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 is Wells, 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 that's how I came back. That's a little too much. It's funny, kind of, but the more I think about it, the more it pisses me off because it's like telling the, f the viewers, Fuck you for questioning how he came back, you know? It just rubs me the wrong way, uh, more than anything. Um, then, from what I remember, uh, Barry manages to wake up uh, Iris somehow. Uh, this part of the episode is stupid. It's clearly that this part was shot during COVID. And it's such a fucking mess. Somehow they kind of include the power of love or something like I don't even get what they were trying to do with that it's it, it, it's complete fucking nonsense uh, apparently the speed force hid inside of Iris all the way back in season one even though the whole freaking timeline got rewritten from that point so how the hell is that even a thing did that even happen in this reality or like what it, it's such a confusing mess like the timeline is already a mess but like it, it, it's such a mess. It's such a mess. It's such a mess to even talk about. But apparently, like, the Speed Force hid inside of Iris, so they're actually going to be rebooting the original Speed Force. That is the real Speed Force, not the artificial one. But then, why? If, if, if the Speed Force never died, why the hell did it act like it did in that episode? Like, it was such a dramatic thing to have happened. And now apparently it's not dead. Do we have the Speed Force back to where it was? If we do, why the fuck was killing the Speed Force even a thing? If you're going to bring her back again, like what? Are you high? Like what? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. But yeah, they end up uh, rebooting, I guess, the original Speed Force as it was. And there's a weird scene where Harrison Wells uh, looks... Uh, at the direction where the sphere which uh, Iris uses to power up the speed force and he takes off his glasses and it's still not clear what exactly uh, he was looking at although we're kind of led to believe that it was at the uh, he was looking at the power surge that came off uh, or at least that's what I think he was looking at the power surge that came off of the speed force and shot into the sky that we saw at the end of the episode but I don't know if that's the case. Maybe it's uh, something that he tra back, uh, traveled back in time in the future, or maybe Barry traveled back in time uh, in the future. I don't know. Hopefully, that's gonna get explained. Maybe that was something that would have been shown, but because of the cuts that they did to this episode to make it the mess that it is, they kind of forgot to cut that. I don't know. And talking about cutting out stuff. <sighs> We gotta talk about the elongated men in the room, or the lack thereof. Because I assume most of you know all the stuff that happened with... Uh, what was the name of the actor? Hartley? Hartley Sawyer or something? Um, he got into a controversy, so he got fired from The Flash. And um, in this episode, they obviously don't have the actor in it. They maybe had him originally, but they cut him out. So they have him... Uh, supposedly sacrifice uh, himself or have him take a huge risk and get blown apart so his face is a mess and can't talk and that was just so fucking stupid and cringe and it was the stupidest part of the episode for me I get no actually uh, the closing part of the episode with him was probably the dumbest part of it 
because that was even more pointless than this but like it was such a mess like we all know what happened it would have been better off just hand waving it away and telling us that oh he's hiding here oh he's helping there I would have bought that more than seeing his face blown up because that's obviously not Hartley Sawyer and I'm sorry if I'm uh, wrong about his name I know his name is Hartley you know what, let's just call him Ralph. I know that that's not Ralph's actor, so might as well not have had him in the episode because that just distracted me from it. And especially the line afterwards where apparently he got uh, the data to clear uh, Sue's name. And uh, it's just it, the, such simplistic and obviously forced way to explain him that he managed to clear her name just so they can actually finish off his character arc and kick him out uh, as a character from the show going forward and ever talk about him again just like how they haven't talked about Julian ever since season uh, 3 so yeah that was pointless and especially uh, the scene at the end where they have uh, him in like a I don't know some kind of mask and a robotic voice that was especially fucking pointless and such a smack in the face. Like, if you wanna not include him in the episode, if you wanna fire that uh, that actor and write the character out of the show, fine. Better off not include fucking uh, stunt doubles in this episode in place of him. Cause like, that just took from the episode for me. It was obviously forced to just and that character arc and that part of the subplot and, and, and it was stupid it was fucking stupid it was stupid and which was what was even more stupid is the fact that Cisco is back to being a superhero why I thought the whole point and the plot um, of early season 6 was it I mean actually no it was Season 5 that it happened, I think at the end of it, where he gave up his po vibe powers. And I thought that was a stupid thing to do because... I don't think it fits with his character. His problem with having powers kind of came out of nowhere. And... It's stupid and the only reason why uh, you would want to do that with his characters are actually two reasons. One, uh, the actor maybe wanted to leave the show. So they kind of take, took out his powers as a reason to write him out going forward because he's not going to be useful to the team or, I don't know, some other stuff. Or two, the writers were getting uh, tired of using his powers as a... How to say it? Like, they felt like maybe that uh, they were writing themselves into a corner by having such a character who can literally vibe and find wherever a certain thing is, can see the future, can see alternative timelines and do all this crazy shit and teleport and maybe the writers were tired of having to use uh, his powers as a shortcut which is stupid in a way but maybe they were uh, they wanted to be able to write different kind of episodes and not have to include him and his powers in each episode but because if you didn't include his powers in each episode uh, fans would have been asking about it, what happened uh, to him, why is he not doing those things, so maybe that's why they did it, but no, he has a super suit now, and he's basically vibe again, I mean, in terms of his uh, power ways, which he used to be able to do with his hands, he didn't need these giant gauntlets, and from what I've seen of uh, the teaser for the next episode, apparently he is going to be super heroing. It's not just for this episode. So another reason why now they've decided to give back his powers is maybe the actor is okay with staying or most likely because now Ralph is gone and the show, I guess, needs another superhero character to go out on doing stuff with, uh, with Barry. I don't know. I think that's the most likely explanation because... That's the only change from what we had in season 6 to season 7. That's the only reason why they would do that. Because they want to have another character be a superhero with Barry. Even though Caitlyn is still there, you can still have her uh, as a hero, but guess not. Although that final battle scene 
had a couple of cool moments, like I liked seeing uh, Caitlyn and Cisco, or should I say Vibe and Killer Fro Frost, uh, fight off uh, together, and uh, as I said, I actually really liked the music uh, in that scene, because I was already kind of uh, obviously thinking that the episode was garbage, so at this point, taking itself not seriously and just having fun, fun uh, kind of made me like it more, so I honestly really love the song that they used, even though some people think that it was stupid, which I agree, it probably would have been stupid if the episode was taking itself really seriously and was trying to be as dramatic as the last two were, but considering it was such a shit episode already, having a, a stupid song that doesn't really fit with the tone and everything, I kind of like it, and I really really like the scene uh, in which Barry did like the lightning tornado or, or whatever it was, I think that's the best way to describe it, where he just run up on a roof, run around, jumped up and fucking sprayed everybody with lightning, that was awesome, that was one of the best things that we've seen on The Flash uh, uh, recently. I think it's the coolest use of his powers uh, in the last few episodes for sure in season 7, so I did really like that. But the way they defeat Eva is stupid, but again, I didn't really give a shit about anything in this episode, about the stakes. I was just laughing my ass off as if I was watching a parody. So it doesn't really bother me the way they defeated her. But yeah, it was stupid. Uh, with the power of love, they made her realize how bad she was and how, how many bad deeds she was doing. So... She decides to be good, I don't know, she just kind of stops uh, doing bad stuff and the end. <sighs> and this episode didn't even want to keep Iris having powers because at the end of the episode again, it goes out of its way to tell you that Iris doesn't have the powers of controlling mirrors because in the episode she was shown to do have the powers and that would have been interesting kind of make her a meta as well which could have been cool because we have so many of the characters be metas and not every single one of them has to be superhero but like I don't know that could have been a cool development going forward but no the episode literally spells you out and tells you no she's not gonna have the powers going forward and I don't know, that bothered me a little bit, because I think that would have been cool to explore in the next season. Iris as a as a meta. Could have been cool. Especially because like her having mirror powers most likely means that she was also able to teleport through mirrors. Uh, just like Mirror Master. So, basically they could have replayed... Uh, considering that they also gave Cisco his powers in a way, like at least the blast that he could do with his hands, They bas if they had uh, Iris have the mirror powers and be able to teleport through mirrors, they basically would have had uh, Vibe's powers split into two characters, Cisco and Iris. Uh, the teleporting part, Iris. The sound wave part, Cisco. Could have been cool, could have been cool, but no. And as I said, there's that scene with uh, the uh, double for Ralph is, uh, Ralph's actor, and it's just such a slap in the face. Fuck you, CW. Uh, I can I understand why they fired uh, the actor, and I'm not really gonna talk about uh, uh, what he said or whether it was right or wrong to fire him. I understand why, even though I personally think, in a certain way, you shouldn't really be punished 10 years down the line after you've done something bad. I feel like you should be solving it and calling it out as it happens, not 10 years down the line. But still, I'm not, I don't really want to talk about it. But like, as I said, it would have been better off to not really address it at all and not include the character at all. Just hand wave it uh, by telling us that he he was doing, he was uh, here doing something else. I would have preferred that much more than what we got. And then at the end of the episode, we have the reveal that when Barry got his powers back uh, and there was the lightning discharge from the artificial speed force, there was a bunch of uh, lightnings that 
spread around. There's like green lightning, blue lightning, uh, yellow lightning, and I think red lightning or something. And apparently uh, these are the different forces, like the strength force, the sage force, uh, the speed force, and I think there was another one, but I don't remember what their names are. And my question is, to specifically to DC fans who have uh, read comics and stuff, because I haven't released, so I only have bare bones information that I've heard from other people, but I've always wondered why is the speed force the one thing that the corresponding power has like a different dimension? Why is there no a frost force or a vibe force? What, what makes speed force so special to have its own dimension and be a uh, outer dimension, dimension entity or whatever? Uh, and why do we now suddenly get new forces and why do why are they linked with the speed force why do they uh get created because of the speed force i don't really understand that so if somebody can explain it to me that would be great <sighs> but yeah this episode was a mess but at least it was an entertaining mess i wasn't bored by it at all i freaking laughed my ass off a lot so there's that um, in terms of its rating I think I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10 which some might think it's still pretty high but I think it's about average and it's funny at least it's funny so I really enjoyed it even though it was a garbage episode it's objectively a garbage episode and oh I completely forgot to talk about it um, at the end of the episode we don't even get to keep fucking Harrison Wells. I think I mentioned it earlier, but like... If you go out of your way to create a way to revive the original Harrison Wells, why the fuck why didn't you keep him? Why would you write him out? Why? And uh, apparently Tom Kavanagh is still gonna be in the season. How? Is he gonna replace Ralph's actor as playing Ralph? Is that what's gonna happen? Or are they gonna still bring back these Harrison Wells even though why the fuck would you write him out anyway? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out going forward, but like Apparently he's like a fucking timeless Wells. He's a god, he can travel in time, he can travel in time during his own timeline at any point. So he chooses to go back to relieve his past with uh, his dead wife Tess. Which is nice that he kind of gets a bittersweet or a happy ending because obviously he was robbed from his happiness back when the reverse flash killed him, but why? Again, it would have been much better to get him as a new Wells character who has to learn who uh, everything that has happened over the seasons. Uh, uh, the fact that he was killed by the Revolver Slash, that now Barry owns Star Labs, and having to build these relationships with the, the characters of the show from the beginning. Basically, us getting a new Wells. And even having him have all the memories of the different Wellses could have been cool because he's basically the ultimate Wells. It could still would have worked, it could have still worked, but no, for some reason they just write him off the episode. And it, I don't understand why. Hopefully, I'm gonna get it going forward in this season when we see him back, or if he, if we see him back. But right now, it pisses me off the way they wrote him out, and the fact that they wrote him out in the first place actually is what pisses me off. But yeah, as I said, this episode for me is a 5.5 out of 10. It's garbage, but it's it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. And it made me laugh, so it gets a little bit of a pass, but it, it's not a good episode, for sure. If you're taking it seriously, it's terrible. If you're not taking it seriously, it's a confusing mess that is dumb. That's the best way to describe it. So yeah, what did you guys think? Comment down below, I would be really happy to hear your opinions, because... I, I love discussing the uh, the shows that I watch with you guys, so I, I'm really curious what you think, so comment it down below. 
And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, leave a like, subscribe. Also, check out the link in the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me there. And to my Wattpad, where I post my stories. Because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you ever enjoy my stories or you simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to Patreon where you can pledge your support and help get the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. You can still help me out in other ways, like liking this video, subscribing, and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think it's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!